Right, we're here today um, on Trent, doing something a little bit different. I'm using small baits for barbel, just showing that you can catch them through the day when it's nice and sunny. It's putting up a real good fight in this fast flowing water. I'm just fishing a small feeder with some ground bait in, a little eight mil um, pellet a couple of chucks and it's ripped off. It's a powerful fish, hopefully it's a good one. I don't like to be bigger than I thought it was. I hate it when he does that. Do you want know the seat net and the shoot off? <sighs> nice one. Right, it's not the biggest barbel you pull obviously off the trend, but it's a fish on a quite a difficult day today. It's bright sunshine, the water's really, really long clear. I've scaled down a little bit using smaller baits, and this has gone probably second cast. So hopefully we'll get a few more of these today, and I'll show you the methods I've used to catch these. So as normal, especially this time of year, it's important that you rest these barbel up before you put them back. They do fight, um, they give it all in the fight, and sometimes they need a little bit of uh, time just to rest in your landing net. Always make sure they're facing upstream. Make sure they've got plenty of uh, water running through the gills, and they'll just swim out when they're ready to go back. Right, so the game I'm using today to catch these barbel, I'm not fishing far out, I'm not fishing great big leads or anything like that. So I'm just using my 175 Amigas, it's got plenty of power. It's really rocky in the margins here, so I'm getting a good bite indication off them. But I've got all the power that I need to pull away from these rocks. It's a 10 pound core and barbel line. Again, it's tough as old boots, quite low diameter, so I'm not having to fish the rods up in the air. I'm fishing just in the margins now so I can fish with the rods pointing down. Again, when you're playing these barbel, you can feel them rubbing against these rocks and everything like that. And it, it's never ever let me down, to be honest with you. It's a fantastic, robust line. And I'm doing a fishing through to a bolt and run kit, to a, one of our small little um, two ounce feeders, little river cage feeder. And the great thing about these is you can use loads of different baits in them. I mean, today I've used maggots, I've used little two mil pellets, I've used hemp, I've used six mil pellets. And all I'm doing is I'm just packing them in and just plugging a bit of ground bait in the bottom. And they're a perfect flat shape for sitting on the bottom of the riverbed. I say I'm only using two ounces today and it's never moved, it's never rolled or anything like that. And that's due to the fact that I'm using a low diameter main line. You haven't got that force on the uh, on the line like you have if you're using like a, a 12 or a 15. So everything, so everything's slightly scaled down but it's still strong enough. You've still got that strength you need to land these barbel. Um, hook length and hooks, again, reflect that principle of being robust enough to land a fish, but fine enough to get bites. I either use the 10 pound or the eight pound smoke shield. Again, it's as tough as old boots, like I say before with the real line. When I'm playing these barbel, I can feel them rubbing against these rocks when you're bringing them in. And I've got 100% confidence that that's never gonna give way. It's got this fantastic um, abrasion resistance to it and it's just a great low diameter line. The hooks I've been using today are the size 12 grapplers. I think nothing to be honest with you, if it was a little bit hard going, if I'm using maggots and casters I'd drop to a 14 but 12 is a good all round one for using things like 8mm eight, eight pellets, um, small 10mm cubes of meat, little 8mm boilers and things like that. And, it's, and again, it's a, it's a good strong hook. Once these, once these come in, they never ever come out. But because of the size that you'd be able to use, it allows you to use that finesse approach a little bit more. All right, so I've just made a small change. I've been fishing a, a little feeder with pellets and plugging it with ground bait. I've just made a change to filling it with maggots. Still plugging it with the same ground bait though. And it's, got, and it's gone round straight away. Again, it feels a, a decent fish. I always start selling this flow. It's kiting out towards middle. But it just shows sometimes if you're sitting there without a bite, and you think you should be getting a bite, doing a small change, even changing from pellets to pellets to maggots in feeders brought this, brought this fish. So it's always worthwhile chopping and changing a little bit rather than just sitting on your hands all the time. If you're only going to come for a few hours, you've got limited time, you haven't really got 
long to sit on your hands, try different things, try different baits, different up baits, different feed baits through your feeder. And you might find that you get an instant response and then you might have to change again. But if you didn't make that change, then you might not get that bite. So this is pulling a bit, like they all do. This is why everybody comes onto River Trent to catch these, uh, to catch these fish. It's a busy old day again on here. It's easy to see why when you're catching, when you're catching fish that pull like this. Right, it's been a little bit difficult today, so I fished a little bit negative. I say small feeders, small baits, small hooks. But there might be a time when you start like that and you're getting more and more bites and you want to introduce some more bait. Now using the bolt and run system, it's really easy to take that small feeder off and clip on one of our larger river cage feeders or just a standard river feeder. Pack loads of bait in there because if the barbell are feeding, you need to put plenty of bait in to keep them in your swim. What I'd also do as well is if I was getting a lot of bites and I felt as though there were a lot of fish in my swim, is I'd feed a lot of particles using one of our, using one of our boppers. I'd feed things like four mil pellets, hemp, maggots, you know, ground bait or whatever. Just, just, keep, just keep feeding that in. Take a notice where your feeder sits in the water and just fish exactly the same line with this. I think nothing of putting upwards of a dozen of these in. If I'm getting plenty of bites and I think the fish needed feeding. On the other side, if it were a little bit slow and I was really struggling for a bite and I wanted to cut back on feed, I'd take the feeder off and just replace it with one of our bait gripper leads. You can still get loads of bites if you want to, you can still put a little bit of feed in there, some damp pellets or some ground bait. But that's another way of getting extra bites when you think you might be feeding too much. The second fish of the session, I've caught this one doing a slight change from the first one. The first one was uh, small 8mm pellets on air, 6mm pellets in feeder, plugged with ground bait. I've had a couple of casts now without a bite, so I changed to filling the feeder full of maggots, still plugging it with ground bait, and put a small piece of meat on the hook. These fish are clearly wanting these maggots now, so I think the next change I'll make will be a bunch of maggots on that size 12 grappler and see if we can get another one. Right, so in keeping with fishing, uh, sort of lighter tactics, smaller hooks, smaller baits, I'll just take through my bait I've used today. So all I've done is, the one thing that I've used all the time is this um, Empanile that crushed from Sonder Baits. It's a brilliant sticky ground bait. It is what it says on the label. It's crushed hemp and uh, halibut pellets. And that's always used to plug my feeder. It's, you know, it's something that the barb will really enjoy. And it's a really good carrier. Mix up so it's quite sticky. Put plenty of this uh, hemp oil in it as well for added attraction. And then all I've done then is, throughout the day I've, I've chopped and changed. I've filled my feeder full of uh, red maggots. And I've used maggots on the hook as well to catch some, to catch some of these barbel. I've filled the feeder full of three mil pellets. But I don't tend to use a lot of these because there's a lot of silver fish in this river. There's loads of little dates and chub on to another. And they don't tend to last very long at the bottom if you put those in. So I've been using a lot of these six mil pellets. They're a lot bigger food source. So once the feed is empty, it's going to stay in the bottom longer. And that in turn attracts, you, attracts the barbel. And then the hook baits have been simple. It's been either maggot, single um, or double uh, eight mil pellet hose. Just a couple of those on air. I've used big bunches of maggots on hook. Um, and I've also used small cubes of meat. I've just Cube these up to about 10 mil, 10 mil in size. Again, put loads of this um, hemp oil on them, spicy sausage hemp oil on them, and I've just been fishing a single or a double 10 mil cube of meat. Just held in place with one of our meat stops.
right? That's another slight change. Just brought another bite. I've had so so far I've had every fish after making a small change. It just shows sometimes that you don't want to be sitting behind motionless rods all day with exactly the same bait on, exactly the same presentation, waiting for it to go off. Sometimes you have to make a change yourself in order to catch these fish through the day. All I've done is I've just changed. Um, still fishing a feeder, still still putting pellets in feeder, but I, I had a small sort of eight, eight to 10 size cube of meat on. Didn't get a bite, so I actually went to a double piece and I bet the rod's only been in the water about a minute or so and it's gone it's gone tearing off. There's another nice fish. They're not they're not absolute monsters, but as long as you're getting bites through the day, you know those those bigger fish do tend to come out a lot more at night, but there's no point sitting behind motionless rods through the day or even reeling in through the day like I see a lot of people doing when there's still fish to be caught. If you just alter your tactics slightly, there may not be the uh, big doubles that you see a lot of anglers get on the night time, but any fish at all is better than nothing when conditions are when conditions are like this and it just shows you don't have to reel in sit in your bivvies all day just fish slightly different fish slightly smaller baits lighter lines um suitable gear though you know don't don't do anything daft like fishing really light lines because there's no point hooking a fish if you're going to lose it but the selfish there to be caught if you alter your tactics slightly you know, when people think about fishing on trend, they, they automatically think about things like bivvies, two or three rods on a pod, which is great. Which is great if that's what you want to do. But there are other ways to catch these fish through the day. I mean, I'm only fishing a day session myself today. You don't always have time to do overnighters, things like that. It's a better fish, isn't it? Slightly. That's another barbel taken after making another change. Been a little bit difficult today. I've had to chop and change methods. There's, there doesn't seem to be like a, a sort of standout tactic that's caught me these fish. But every time we do a slight change, I catch one of these. Fantastic Trent barbel. And hopefully there's a few more to come. Right, I've just packed in now, that's been the end of a, a frustrating um, but an enjoyable session on the trend. Hopefully you've picked a few things up from it. You know, don't be afraid of coming down and fishing these day sessions early on these rivers. There are fish there to be caught if you follow some of the uh, tactics and tips I've given you today. I'm off now, Cameron's got to go back now, so uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>